and the president didn't often address the nation directly. Lincoln's chance came at the dedication of a cemetery in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. The Battle of Gettysburg had been a great victory for the Union. Union soldiers had stopped the rebels from pushing their way north. But more than 3,000 Union soldiers and almost 5,000 Confederate soldiers had been killed, and a special cemetery was created to bury them all. The dedication of the cemetery took place on November 19, 1863. Even though Lincoln was the president, he was not the main speaker. That was Edward Everett, a man famous for long, fancy speeches. Everett talked for almost two hours. Lincoln spoke for only two minutes. His words were simple and direct. He began by quoting a line from the Declaration of Independence. All men are created equal. He reminded his audience that the United States was the first country founded on that idea of equality. In 1776, no one had known if such a country could work. Now people were wondering if it could last. Maybe it was about to fall apart. Lincoln could not give in to the rebels' demands because the country had to survive. The Union was fighting to keep the United States united, but also to guarantee that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. According to some listeners, the end of Lincoln's speech was greeted with silence. People were too moved even to clap. Edward Everett wrote that Lincoln, in two minutes, had gotten to the heart of the subject better than his own entire long speech. History agrees with Everett. The Gettysburg Address is widely considered one of the most beautiful and important speeches ever written. But the war had gone on for almost a thousand days, and there was still no end in sight. Chapter 9 The War is Won In 1864, Lincoln's first term as president was coming to an end. There was supposed to be an election in November. But was it possible to hold an election during a civil war? Lincoln's advisers suggested putting it off until the war was over. He refused. We cannot have free government without elections, he explained. So a campaign began, although people in the rebel states would not be voting. Lincoln's opponent was George McClellan, the general who wouldn't fight. In his speeches, McClellan hinted that he would be willing to compromise to end the war. Lincoln was not at all sure he would win the election. Many Americans were fed up with the war. They were ready to vote for anyone who promised a quick end. But Lincoln knew that the soldiers supported him, so he made sure they were able to vote. Then, right before the election, the Union won some huge victories. General William Sherman, who had been trained by Grant, captured Atlanta. General Philip Sheridan, also trained by Grant, won a series of battles in the Shenandoah Valley. And Grant himself was close to taking the Confederate capital at Richmond, Virginia. With faith in the war restored, the voters elected Lincoln to a second term. By the beginning of 1865, the end of the war was finally in sight. On March 25th, Grant's army captured Richmond. Then he cornered the troops of General Robert E. Lee, the leader of the Confederate Army. Lee had no choice. On April 9th, he surrendered his army to Grant at Appomattox, Virginia. For all practical purposes, the Civil War was over. Lincoln was not present for the surrender. The two generals met in a courthouse. Grant was careful to treat Lee generously. He knew that was what Lincoln wanted. The defeated soldiers would not be paraded through the streets or mocked. 
They would even be allowed to keep their horses. And Grant arranged for food to be given to the starving Confederate troops. Back in Washington, excited crowds surrounded the White House. Everyone was calling for Lincoln. Tad was given a big cheer when he appeared at the window waving a Confederate flag. Then Lincoln arrived. He asked the band to play the Southern song Dixie. He had always liked the tune, he said, and now the song belonged to the whole country again. Lincoln had been planning for this day for a long time. Bringing back peace was even more important than waging war, and it was going to be just as difficult. With Lincoln's encouragement, Congress passed the 13th Amendment to the Constitution. This amendment would outlaw slavery everywhere in the United States. In his second inaugural speech, Lincoln had said that he wanted to welcome the rebel states back to the Union. But as he spoke to the crowd outside the Capitol building, not everyone was cheering for him. A photograph shows John Wilkes Booth and his comrades standing nearby. These men were already plotting to kill the president. Booth was a successful actor. Some people called him the handsomest man in America. He was devoted to the Confederacy and believed slavery was not just good for white people, it was even good for black people. He despised Lincoln, who he thought was rude and uncultured. He was sure Lincoln was destroying the country. About a month into his second term, Lincoln had a terrible dream. In it, he walked into the White House and saw himself lying dead in a coffin. He asked a guard what had happened. The guard said, He was killed by an assassin. Three days later, on April 14th, 1865, Lincoln went to a comedy at Ford's Theater with his wife and some friends. He and Mary wanted to relax and enjoy themselves. That afternoon, he had said to her,